In this video, I'm going to show you what the report looks like now when we do analysis, and you can see how it's changed a little bit. In the previous video, we went and we analyzed a very small subset of data, and we're going to look at that now. Uh, we had the choice to put that in the default directory under where we've installed OS Watch or Blackbox. There's an analysis subdirectory, and that's where we've decided to put this, but we could have put this file in any location, but it's just kind of easier to put them all in the same location. We'll look at that file now. And you can see I'm looking at this in TextPad. I kind of like TextPad because it's a, it's like a full screen editor and it, you have a scroll bar down at the bottom. It's If you, don't, if you try to look at these documents on a laptop and, and Notepad or WordPad, they really don't scroll very well and you, it's kind of difficult to see. So I recommend that you use something that's going to give you this full screen capability. But you can see now, for example, we have a table of contents in the report. And I, I'll just show you some of the things that are new in this, in this version. Um, what's new in this version is we're actually looking here now at paging rates. And this, we're getting this information from VMstat, so we've added this to our analysis. Uh, we're also looking, if we're running on Linux, we're looking at collecting page table information, and we're doing some analysis on that. Um, section 5.5 five and 5.6 five, are also new. So what we're doing is we're reporting the top memory uh, process consumers at the start of our analysis and also at the end of our analysis so we can see who the top consumers are and what their uh, memory growth has been uh, during the time that uh, we ran our analysis. Section 6.3 is also new we're looking in addition to how busy these I.O. devices are and the service times, we're looking at the at the wait queues also and we're doing some analysis on that. There's been a lot of uh, more details added into these sections uh, for the network detailed findings and we've uh, looked specifically at the platform that we're running on. I mean the network uh, uh, metrics will look a little bit different on AIX than what they do on HP. So the analyzer is aware of these things, so uh, this is a this is um, a little bit more robust than it was in the previous versions. And all this stuff in section eight is new. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at information coming back from the PS command, and we can do a lot of things with that. For one thing, we'll know how many processes we always have on the server in any given time. Um, we can see any of those processes that have a state or status of D or T, and that's uh, very important if we're trying to isolate some sort of problem um, where it really is kind of difficult to know if this problem is on a server, if it's on the database, on the SAN. Uh, this information helps us with that. We're looking, we're um, collecting information about any time that we have uh, uh, CPU system idle below 30 percent and we have any processes that are clocking CPU we're looking at them in section 3. Section 4 and 5 we're looking at all the processes and what we're doing is a pretty good uh, uh, memory accounting of all these processes over time so we can see what the virtual size and resonance size of all these processes are over time and we can see how they're incrementing and decrementing. So this is very important for problems with uh, with particular processes, memory leaks, and that kind of thing. So that's what's new. Okay, we can see and we're looking at VMstat now, we're looking at the paging coming in, paying particular attention when we have high values. And in this case, we're doing uh, quite a bit of paging because this is a fairly busy machine even though it's a test machine. Okay, section 5, 5, and 5, 6 we're looking at top memory consumers so we can see that the top consumer with respect to um, what's going on on this machine at any given time at the start. This was the top consumer. These were the top five consumers. The same at the end. They just happen in this case to be the same thing but they, they need not be Okay. Looking at the wait queue here, 
in this case uh, nothing significant we just reported this I think because we had a little bit of high service time but nothing significant here okay there's some network findings from TCP and um, these whatever these parameters are we uh, we computed the delta between what they were at the beginning of the analysis and at the end and report the, the difference here the delta and then we look and see if we detect anything in this case we have high ratios for out of order segments so there is some analysis being done on on these uh, metrics here let me show you now the new stuff with the information we're getting back from the PS command now remember this was just a a very small amount of um, of data that we looked at we looked at just basically from 8 o'clock to to about eight minutes after eight so we can see that we were running about 717 or 20 processes uh, normally right so that's what our process load is on our server we're looking at any processes then that have a status of D or T in this case because this was just a test machine there was really nothing significant going on but there could be and let me show you what you could see you could see something that looked like this if you had a problem right a status of D right which is indication that uh, there's some problem right into a uh, to disk and uh, if you see this kind of problem on the server itself and you think you have an IO problem uh, it can help you isolate whether that IO problem has something to do with the database or if it has something to do with the server or if it has something to do with the SAN so this kind of information is very very useful okay continuing down <clears throat> again we're logging any information we get when we have um, low um, uh, CPU idle when it's less than 30 percent we show who's uh, who's who are the top consumers of CPU at that particular time okay so now we're looking at the section 8.4 and 8.5 basically we're doing memory accounting here we're looking at all the processes on the server with respect to their virtual size and you can see percent CPU and percent mem so this is ordered by um, how significant the change is so the most significant change is this change by a value of 448 which is 0 0.06 percent so during this particular snapshot these are all the processes that had the virtual size uh, incremented you can see in some cases the size actually decrements so we can see over time basically what all these processes are doing on the server so here we are looking at virtual size section 8.5 looks at the same thing only with respect to the resident size so again it's a pretty accurate accounting of what's going on with respect to memory